is only war. What is up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. We are back uh, with another video. We are doing a specific how-to video on uh, one of my favorite strats, if not one of the most powerful strats and probably the best strat in the entire game. Uh, it's called Rapid Ingress. So if you guys are new to 40K uh, or you're new to 10th edition, this came out in 10th edition. And when it, when it did come out, everybody was super excited about it and, and thought it was gonna be super broken with Terminator squads, Deep Strike and all that stuff. With this video, we're gonna go over a lot of tactical and ideas on how to rapid ingress for you guys and your specific armies this is good for every army out there in 40k so if you guys are liking the the video and you guys want to share definitely share it to a lot of different uh media platforms and stuff like that we're only specifically on youtube so i can only get this to my youtube subscribers so if you guys want to help and support this and uh share with everybody please do so if you guys are patreons thank you for supporting the the channel uh, we just got back from the honeymoon, so we were about, uh, gone for about 14 days. We had a couple videos pop up uh, while I was away. Those all come out on Patreon first. So if you guys want first access to these videos, head over to patreon.com, but go head over to Discord because we have over 700 people on that Discord, all helping each other out. It's a really cool community. All the dirt bags are just freaking awesome. Uh, but I can't, I, I, I was thinking about this video when I was away uh, because it, it, there's, we could probably make three or four videos specifically just on this one stratagem uh, alone. But I'm going to go over uh, a lot of different ideas on that I use it for that way you can use it in your gameplay to help kind of catch people off guard, uh, change up the mindset of your opponent, and really have the confidence that whatever you see on the tabletop, you're built. You're like, all right, that side of of the table is going to be mine next turn. And we'll explain how that works. So here's the stratagem. We'll go over it uh, in detail. Uh, and then we'll kind of, you know, ha have fun <laughs> with examples on how you can really fuck up uh, your opponent. And the best question to ask, the, the most, the one that makes people shit their the pants the most is, "Are you done your movement?" Like that, that, that question alone is, "Are you, are you done your movement phase?" That question needs to be on a shirt. And somebody has to wear that to a GT, uh, and and I will buy it from you, please. But that question makes people like go, "Oh fuck, where did I mess up? What did I forget?" Uh, and then you just see the people's face drop when you ask that question. But let's go over rapid ingress. Rapid ingress, end of your opponent's movement phase. So this happens once your opponent, on turn two, most of the time, is done their movement phase. You can then spend one cp that, that's all it is one cp and bring one of your units that are in reserves which could be deep strike or re regular reserves they can then walk onto the table or deep strike onto the table anywhere as long as it's outside nine inches of your opponent sometimes 12 inches if they have that 12 inch bubble like space marines but that alone right there is is insane your unit can arrive on the battlefield as if it was reinforcement step of your movement phase. So you cannot use a stratagem if you're unable to uh, arrive on the battlefield that not normally do so. So like turn one, or if there's a specific side mission where you can't, can't come in until turn three, whatever it may be. But <clears throat> Rapid Ingress states that if you're walking in from reserves now it, with reserves, let's, let's pull up the reserve rules. Okay, this was a big difference from ninth to 10th edition. Right here, this sentence, setting up strategic reserves. Uh, this is people walking on, not deep striking. Deep striking, it just says you have to come in outside nine inches uh, of your opponent. But this one, uh, setting up in strategic reserves. In the first turn, you can only come in, or I'm sorry, second turn on, uh, you can't come in your opponent's deployment zone. So anywhere that you're setting up, you cannot come in your enemy's deployment zone. Now they got, they completely deleted the uh, battlefield edge. There's no more battlefield edge when it comes to reserves. Uh, it's only deployment zone. So on turn two, you have to plan out, all right, if my, deploy if my de opponent's deployment zone is over there, I can't come in over in those two you know sides of the table because it's a deployment zone. Um, but on turn three, you can then come in uh, from the third battle round onwards, set up wholly within six inches of any battlefield edge. It used to just be non-opponent's -op battlefield edge, but now it's any battlefield edge. So you can literally come in the deployment zone, any any edge that you want on turn three. Uh, cannot be set up within nine inches of an, an enemy models, which is you know the same thing. But let's just think about this. I'm going to pull up uh, the zones for you uh, for Games Workshop. 
All right, so here's an example of all the maps in 10th edition. So we have the one where it's uh, starting nine inches outside of the deployment zone. We have the one that's going uh, slanted. We have one that's uh, even more slanted. This one's kind of like long table edge. This one's short table edge. And then we have the Dawn of War uh, down here and then the Hammer of Anvil. So the Hammer of Anvil right here. Uh, let me see if I can get a pen going, red pen. All right, cool, so these ones. So now we're gonna pretend that we are the red zones all right so if we are the red uh, the attacker we then can't come in the defender's deployment zone so on turn two you can come in this table edge this table edge this table edge uh this table edge this table edge. basically like anywhere where the this is coming in you just can't come in anywhere in this blue side so you can't come in anywhere here anywhere in here anywhere in here here or here well this one's hard because it's the, their entire board edge but at least you can still come in on the sides right outside the deployment zone right here as long as you're nine inches away from them you're able to come in right there um so when we're setting up the table and for me example i run chaos space marines with a cursed cultist when you have a 25 man 24 man a cursed cultist blob come in from the side table edge uh, on your movement phase which you can basically set up as a defender um, you basically come in and you have them not be shot at because there's so much terrain on the table now that when you walk them in six inches you you set them up so that way your opponent agrees that they can't shoot at you because again they're dumb movement they already moved their models, so they can't move again. So when you move in your guys, you then can't be shot at, so they're, they're safe. And then on your turn, you then get a full movement. In my case, I can advance and charge. I can then advance and charge, and I'm already 9 inches away, usually 9, 10, 12 inches away. If I, let's say, move up 6 inches, I then have a 6-inch charge on my turn against their backfield. So if we're thinking about this one right here, the search and destroy... Uh, if they if if I bring in all my little guys right here, right? Let's say they have a, a little building right here, and there's a little guy right here. Well, I'm now nine inches away from this dude coming in right here, so I'm nine inches away from this guy, but he can't see me because of this building, which is right there. So these guys come in six inches. Hopefully you guys can kind of see this. So this guy comes in six inches right there. Uh, he's right there behind the, the wall, so he can't shoot me. I'm nine inches away, and then on my turn, I basically just move up and then charge and take over his entire backfield with my Chris Cultus. That's one example. The other example is you can come in on the other side up here and do the same exact thing. Um, you can come in over here. If, he, if, if the fighting is over here, you can come in over here. If the fighting is over here, wherever the fighting you need them to come in at, that's where they're coming in at. So that's the example of a reserved unit walking in from the table edge. Um, when you have a deep strike unit, it's a little bit easier to put them really anywhere you need them. There's a lot of space marines that could deep strike. There's uh, terminators really in any faction that could deep strike. You have uh, nids that can come down and deep strike. So anything that's coming down via deep strike, you can put them anywhere on the table. Um, even in your opponent's deployment zone, uh, that is on turn two or, or more, as long as you're nine inches away. And it's um, uh, horizontal, vertical horizontal so like on the ground so if they're on the on the bottom floor and you're trying to go up to the top floor you can't do that it has to be lateral um, when you're setting up nine inches away so let's say you deep strike a unit uh, let's use a different pen black pen so let's say you're you're deep striking your 10 man uh, terminator brick right here in the center of the table because there's nobody within nine inches of you this way uh, and then on your turn, you can then just move them up five inches and then charge whatever you want to charge in their deployment zone or on their objective or wherever it may be. So that is an example of a deep strike where you can come down, uh, rapid ingress, and then just kind of take over an entire flank. So you're going to be a little bit more defensive when, it, when you're coming in from strategic reserves. You don't want to come in and just have their entire army shoot at you. Uh, even now with towering gone, towering was a role where if you can see somebody, you can shoot them. 
basically they ignore all the terrain rules in the game. Towering is now a little bit different where you still have to have line of sight, but you don't ignore the terrain unless you're towing into that specific terrain, then you ignore that terrain that you're touching. That's the biggest difference with towering in 10th edition when it was in the beginning of 10th edition. So with towering now, let's say there's a big ass fucking um, knight in the back here, right here. And you're bringing your guys in this little uh, wall right here. So if you deep strike your guys on the other side of this wall, he can't see you. But if you deep strike your guys right here, he can then just shoot you on his turn because it's now his shooting phase. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're deploying your guys defensively when it comes to the rapid ingress stratagem. You don't wanna give them free kills on your rapid ingress. You're spending one CP for this, so might as well get the use out of these guys. So let's go into Dawn of War. Uh, most of the time on turn one, all of the um, blue team is basically running up to defend. Now they're running up, running up. They're basically setting up for their turn one. So the entire team is is right here. Your turn one, you're basically moving up defensively, or if you can get into uh, some combat, you could. But your your turn, you're basically moving up your army to kind of like defend or set up a counterattack, whatever it may be. So most of the time, his whole army is going to be pretty much taking over like this part of the board. So now on his turn, if he moves up to get onto the objective, let's say here, he moves up, th this guy moves in a little bit this way. So now he's leaving over like this side, but most of his army is over here. I know this is like basically crowns right now, but most of his army is at the top here. You want to take over the bottom because you want to uh, have a unit that just wants to control one side of the table. Because if, if you bring in your reserve unit on this side, you might, you know, there might not be enough room or you're just gonna die because there's not enough oomph to take over that side of the table. But if I bring in my unit over here, rapid ingress at the top of turn two, because he went first, I then get to rapid ingress on the top of his turn two. I rapid ingress here, which means then on my bottom of turn two, I can then move up my unit, take over this side of the table um, and just camp for the rest of the game. So that would be an example of, of the Dawn of War where they're gonna block off most of the table, but if they give you that room to come in uh, and do what you're trying to do, which is take over the side of the table, that's what you're gonna be doing for that. So Rapid Ingress is so good in 10th edition right now um, that every single list, I would be making something that I'm gonna be planning for Rapid Ingress. All right, so now let's, let's go over some examples of armies that you're gonna be Rapid Ingressing. There's some armies that you really don't have to, like Grey Knights, for example. Grey Knights uh, are hopping over the table all over the place. They don't have to waste a CP to come in from reserves because most of the time they're going to have two to three, even four units deep striking all over the table at every single time. So Grey Knights a little bit different where if you're going to rapid ingress, it has to be uh, probably tied into mist. If you mist, which means you go up into reserves, right? because they come in with a nine in their movement phase. You then spend one CP to Mist of Deimos, go up into reserves. You can then rapid ingress and come back down at the end of the movement phase in your opponent's turn. So that's a little combo that once I started doing that at Nova, people were like, holy shit, you can actually do that? And yes, you can do that. So basically you Mist of Deimos and then go up into reserve. And now that you're in reserves, you can then spend one CP to come back down uh, with rapid ingress in a more strategic position so that way on your turn you can then move up and do what you wanted to do which is super deadly for gray knights when you catch people off guard doing that like i've had a 10-man paladin brick come back down on my home field objective to block uh capture enemy outpost secondary which works so fucking well because now there's like 30 opsec on on the backfield objective so that's something you could be doing for gray knights with rapid ingress that's going to be catching your opponent off guard with other units like or other armies like death guard for example there's a lot of really slow moving parts in death guard that you want to get the most advantage to movement uh with rapid ingress so with this list uh for example this is a can't touch me list uh this is the focusing on the minus one and then the minus one ballistic scale stuff like that so for when you're building a list for any army that you're using, in my mind, I always try and think, all right, what unit am I gonna be rapid ingressing? Or what unit do I want to rapid ingress uh, throughout the game? So almost always you're gonna have one, if not two units in reserves, whether it be normal reserves or deep strike reserves, where you can then plan to rapid ingress on a portion of the table to plan your list around that rapid ingress target so for me i have a 10-man blight lord terminator unit uh, that could deep strike that's attached to 
uh, the Lord of Virulence. So the Lord of Virulence is attached to that squad because they get four rerolls to wound uh, with shooting. But if they're going to be my shooting unit, you can then also bring a six-man Terminator unit of Death Shroud attached to Typhus. Now, this is more of a melee unit. So the 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 flamers that they have on them are, are cool, but they're not really going to do a lot of damage. So I have two options for rapid ingress. They're probably both going to be in, in deep strike anyway. So you have an option on where you need them. Do I need the melee threat on this side of the table or do I need the gun threat uh, next turn on this side of the table? So most of the time my gun threat's going to come down and just obliterate whatever they want to shoot at one turn. So they're not really going to be my focus on rapid ingress. Mainly it's going to be my typhus and melee death shroud terminate unit. So that's my mindset with building this list is almost 90% of the time I'm going to be rapid ingressing my death shroud terminate unit. So you have to make sure you have the CP first off for that extra, you know, CP spent to come in with reserves, but you want to make sure that you put them in a, in a uh, spot where you can actually come down and now they're speed four, which is crazy. Uh, they're speed four. So then they have if they come out outside nine inches, they have to move up four and then they have a five inch charge after that. So if they're coming in within 12, you have to think about this. If they have uh, infiltrators where you can't deep strike within 12 inches, you have to try and remember that. Because if you place outside 12 inches and you're speed four, you still have an eight inch charge after that. So five inches is obviously a lot better than eight inches. Uh, that's what she said. So you have to make sure that you're planning ahead of time if you're facing any infiltrators uh, and stuff like that. So that's an example of what you're trying to build with you know, a specific army uh, to rapid ingress. Now, specifically for my Chaos Space Marine, I have three Accursed Cultists uh, in my list. So I have one unit that's Nurgle, one unit that's uh, undivided, and another unit that's undivided. My plan throughout every single game is always to be walking on from Strategic Reserve a unit of Accursed Cultists. So one Accursed Cultist is starting on the table, one is Nurgle Accursed Cultist starting on the table, so that way they can't be shot at and they can be more aggressive when it comes to deployment. But then the third unit is almost always coming in from the side wherever I need them. If I need more bodies on this side, I need to bring them in at the top. If I need more bodies on this side because there's a big threat over there, I need to walk him in from over there. But every single game I'm planning around this Accursed Cultist unit coming in from the side and taking over this flank because with so many obsec bodies and they hit really fucking hard and they can advance and charge uh, on your turn once per game. So they basically get that advance and charge move. So they advance, let's say, three inches. So that movement is nine. So they're already essentially one inch away from when they came in from the table edge. But it helps out with uh, infiltrators that can be 12 inches away. So if you come outside 12 inches, I then advance, you know, let's say two inches. So I'm eight inches. Now I have a four inch charge. That's the mindset of coming in with a strategic reserve unit with rapid ingress, especially with an accursed cultish unit. So this works really well if you're going to uh, um, rapid ingress raptors or uh, the new one, um, fuck, warp talents. So if you're going to bring warp talents uh, and you want to rapid ingress them, that's another good unit because they're speed 12. So you can be a little bit more defensively where if they rapid ingress into a building where they can't be shot at whatsoever, but you're setting them up to have a 12 inch move and then charge over because they have fly uh, another unit, they can then get into people's backfields pretty easily with fly and how fast they they uh, move with their initial movement phase. So if you rapid ingress outside nine inches away, uh, you then come down and then on your turn, you move up 12. So you're already either as close, if not over the unit that you came in from and you get the charge, which you have fly, so you can charge over units that are um, on the ground to hop over other units. So that's another example of something that you're gonna be rapid ingressing with jetpacks or Blood Angel, stuff like that, where you come in with uh, your death company with jetpacks, they basically move up 12 and then charge and kill whatever the hell they touch. That's another example of a really good, really quick rapid ingress target. So here's some um, counters to that, uh, something if you're gonna be going against it. All right, so now we're back at it. If you're starting the game and you see that they are reserves, uh, I, I do this every time I play Zach. Zach plays Blood Angels and he's a really good Blood Angel player, but he almost always rapid ingress uh, Dante or uh, the Golden Boys or his Death Company. So I know that that's basically what he's going to be doing on turn two almost 100% of the time. So when you start the game, you're going to ask like, hey, any reserves? Whoever goes first, you tell the reserves off. Uh, you see what they have in reserves. And then in your mind, you're like, all right, that is who they're going to rapid ingress. That's who they're planning around coming in the table edge, uh, whether it be deep strike or coming in from reserves. So 
that's what I'm going to try and defend for. So on your turn one, you don't have to worry about it unless they have something specifically where they can rapid ingress turn one, which most of the time they can't. I think Nids have a strat where you potentially can. I'm not sure if they could do that with rapid ingress, but um, if it's enhancement, you might be able to. I don't know. But uh, on turn two is what you're really going to be planning and setting up for. So on turn, if they go first, right, you don't really have to worry about it because if they go first, they move up, you then move up. And then they're going to either deep strike outside nine inches away in the, at the end of movement phase, which then they have a nine inch charge. So you don't really have to worry about it. But on your turn two, whether it be you going first, you going second, you have to plan to stop that rapid ingress from where you don't want it to happen. So here's an example. Let's say we're just doing um, this, this one right here, search and destroy. So with search and destroy, uh, we're going to be the attacker. So we're going to be starting off turn one. He's the defender. So on my turn one, I'm basically going to be running. Um, I'm going to be having my cultist, which is going to block out most of the time the back field over here. I'm going to have my bikes, which are you know three bike bases, which are pretty long. They're going to be blocking out uh, either this side or this side. So they're going to be blocking out this edge. I'm going to have my accursed cultists, which are going to start moving this way uh, and then towards the center. So I have basically turn one this side of the table uh, blocked out. Now on his turn one, he's then going to start moving up and basically planning to take over a, a flank, whether he's going in the center uh, or he's coming over here. But this is where he's going to be setting up essentially. Now your turn two is where you have to start making the attack. So you're either going to have to start spreading out and attacking and, and planning that he's not going to come in within nine inches. So my guys are going to start moving over this way and attacking this flank while still keeping nine inches away from all of this, right? So you're still measuring nine inches from the corner, nine inches from the sides. These guys are holding down the, the backfield with your Colts. It's your really cheap 55 point unit. They can block out a lot of the backfield themselves. So they're gonna keep your home field pretty much safe from rapid ingressing. Then over here, you have your other cursed Colts unit that's basically coming out and, sp and spreading out. If I get just one guy right here, that one guy alone can block out nine inches, basically this big ass bubble right here. So that one guy from your Chris Colts unit can block out most of this side right here. So on my turn two, I blocked out basically all of this, which is the goal. So now on his turn, he only has his deployment zone where he can bring guys in. So that's the mindset defensively against rapid ingress. Now you need to know that ahead of time before you start the before you deploy your army. Because when you're deploying your army, you have to know he's not going to tell you who's rapid ingressing, who he's not rapid ingressing. He he doesn't have to tell you that. But in your mind you should know he's going to fucking rapid ingress that unit. So when you're measuring 9 inches, he only has basically this part essentially right here this little section of the board, that's where he can bring his guys in, which now you're controlling where he's putting his unit. So he really wanted to put them fucking anywhere else besides the deployment zone. Like he wanted to have this side open. He wanted to have this side open. He wanted to have this corner open to kind of help out go this way, but he can't. He has to come in on his deployment zone, which he really has to now because if he doesn't, if he doesn't rapid ingress, that unit's kind of screwed because then on your turn, you're then going to spread out a little bit more and stop him from getting really anywhere on the table that he really wants to. Sometimes you can actually block out the entire table. Uh, if you're playing Space Marines or, or really quick units like that, uh, you can actually block out an entire table and kill a unit, which has happened before. So if you have enough guys and you're able to kind of block out most of the most of the table, that unit's dead because they have to come in turn three anyway. So that's a, that's a really good example of what you're doing turn one, turn two, and turn three. Now, let's say you go second, all right? Um, and he has to rapid ingress bottom of two now. Instead of top of two, he's rapid ingressing bottom of two. So if you're here, this is a really hard hammer vandal. This is a really hard one to rapid ingress um, because you're already starting on the entire edge. So if you're starting uh, up here and you're going uh, second, he's gonna move up his guys. So he's gonna start. He's gonna start basically blocking out 
if he's smart, he's going to keep nine inch bubble this entire time on this table edge. <clears throat> then he's going to start moving forward and take over the subjective and then take over the subjective and have some people move up a little bit here. So this is kind of what he's going to be blocking off. So on your turn, you're going to be setting up defensively. So you're going to be blocking off again, the same thing he did. So you're blocking off nine inches around this entire edge. You're going to start moving up slowly to either set up charges or already have charges made, but you're not, you're basically doing the same thing. He is, you're basically blocking out this entire edge. Now for him, he's his turn too. He's either going to be start deep striking to bring his units in sooner, or he's going to hold off that one unit to see what you do to rapid ingress. So as long as you don't leave a space in your backfield, which happens way too often than not, uh, you should be good and defended your entire table edge. Now, if you do leave a space and he's able to rapid ingress a unit, you know, a five man or 10 man, whatever may be in this little corner, because you moved up too far, like let's say you moved up too far and you gave him that nine inches in the corner, he's going to rapid ingress right here at the end of your movement phase because it's turn two. He's going to rapid ingress at the end of your movement phase because you moved you guys up too far. So now he's in your backfield with a 10 man death company unit. So way on his turn, he just moves up and kills your entire backfield. So be careful when you're moving up on turn two specifically, you have to measure out nine inches and make sure that nobody can fit some, some, things that you can do is if it's a big 10 man terminator brick you don't have to be fully nine inches uh from the corner he's got to fit his entire big ass base times 10 all over that so it's actually a huge footprint so sometimes you might get away with putting your guy out here and being like 10 or 11 inches away from the corner because he's still not able to fit an entire 10 man terminator brick in that corner without falling off the table edge so that's Another example is make sure you know the base size. If it's one model or a five man unit, you can fit a lot of spaces on the table with a five man unit, even terminators. So you have to make sure you're measuring every single time on turn two to make sure that they're not gonna rapid ingress behind you or you're gonna control where they're rapid ingressing. Uh, and if you can control that part of the game, you're gonna, you're gonna be in a huge advantage because they set up their entire list or their entire strategy around this one unit coming in and just tabling their opponent uh, with rapid ingress. So that's an example and you that's something you wanna plan for uh, when it comes to this. So hopefully this type of rapid, I'm gonna do a, a more tactical video with rapid ingress with actual models uh, once I get my uh, wedding shit out of the garage because <laughs> we still have to, get it all packed up and, 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 and put away. But once I get all that set up, that's gonna be uh, set up in the garage and we're gonna be doing a little bit more how-to video, uh, maybe having Mike or, or Matt come in and we'll do kind of a little walkthrough on how to do the rapid ingress. But if these types of videos, like tactical videos, more general tactical videos help you guys out, definitely leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, do all the YouTube shit, and also go support us over at patreon.com so these videos come up to you guys sooner over at patreon.com uh, and leave suggestions on what type of videos you wanna see, more general type videos, that are going to help your game out in 10th edition uh, in 2024 moving forward. So appreciate it, guys. Thanks to all my supporters. Uh, thanks for joining the Dirtbag Nation uh, and head over to Discord. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I look at it every single day. But guys, I appreciate it. Good luck and use these strategies in your next game and make a list based off of strategic uh, rapid ingress and you guys will have a lot more fun in 10th edition. What's up, gents? Welcome to the Dirtbag Nation Patreon page. This is going to be support to the Dirtbag Nation. Just to give you a little bit of insight on what we're trying to do and trying to grow into, we're trying to grow a brand name of the Dirtbag Nation, 40K Dirtbags, going all over the, the country uh, and coaching people to get better at the game of 40K. We have really good coaching uh, over at the Dirtbag Nation. Myself uh, is ranked number one for Grey Knights in the world last year in 9th edition. This year, we're currently ranked number one Chaos Space Marine player in the world on ITC 40K rankings. So we have a lot of... Uh, experience over at the channel and a lot of the coaches are going to start joining in and joining the dirtbag nation to help you guys get better at 40k if you guys are new to the patreon page we have a couple different tiers the first tier is the dollar tier that's basically just coming over supporting us for a dollar a month you get first access to the dirtbag videos up on patreon the next tier is a five dollar tier basically you get first access as well as just have a little bit more branding uh, with the per uh, patreon discord page and you want to support us a little bit more than a dollar a month i really appreciate 
Appreciate both you guys. The $10 tier is a competitive dirtbag page. That's where we get more into the tactics, one-on-one -on -one coaching on the Discord. And if you guys have any questions, comments, list ideas, tactics, or game questions, you guys get to message us one-on-one -on -one through Discord. Make sure you take advantage of that because it's completely up to you to ask me any questions you possibly need in the 40K uh, community. Finally, we have the Grandmaster Dirtbag. That dirtbag is above and beyond. They come out and they basically want us to coach them one-on-one -on -one with um, calls on via Discord, TTS games, battle reports, or any tactical videos that you guys want suggestions to, you guys will get first access to, and we actually play live games for you guys or go over battle reports for our Grandmasters. Anything armies that you want to see specifically on the tabletop, that's the Grandmaster Dirtbag page. So it's just an explanation on what the different tiers are for Patreon. But again, thank you so much for the support. If you guys are thinking about it, you do have really good coaching. We drink beers, we have fun, we just kind of chill out and teach you guys how to have fun at 40k unlike some other uh, people on youtube but have fun at 40k be good win some games more than than you're averagely winning uh, over there all over the world and if you guys really just want to support the channel we have our dollar and five dollar a month uh, as well there's all the stickers and dice available to you guys uh, at a discount and you have your own patreon uh, tab in discord that nobody else has access to besides you guys so i appreciate you guys thank you so much for the port we're gonna grow dirtbag nation as much as we possibly can in 2024 uh, and again it all thanks to you guys appreciate it